Hello, this is Rafael Jaba, and this is my video for the third tutorial on the electrical engineering class at Gloucester High School. I have a circuit here with multiple LEDs, or light emitting diodes, as well as multiple of these potentiometers. This project's main purpose is simple, just to blink the different colors of an RGB LED at separate rates. So each one of these will be blinking at a different, or each of the colors in the RGB LED will be blinking at a different rate. Later on, I uh, will explain the code and the schematic of the circuitry. Just the main part of this though is the RGB LED. The LED is a light emitting diode, just a diode, a one way valve that emits light. The next main component to deliver power to these LEDs are these resistors. Each of them is 100 ohms each. They reduce the amount of energy given to the LEDs to lower the brightness. And for this case, for the green one, I did not need it. For some reason, with the resistor plugged in, I could barely see the green, both in the RGB LED and in this LED. I don't know why, but that's the case, I guess. So that LED does not need a resistor. And the final main component for this circuit is these potentiometers. Potentiometer has three connections right here. One, two, three. Each of these, negative, positive, and the output in the orange. Depending on the direction, of these knobs on the top, the potentiometer will send a different output through the middle wire or the middle pin through these orange wires. In this case for this specific circuit, the three potentiometers are connected to these three analog inputs on the built-in Arduino Uno R4 with this jumper wire. These are to the positive brown is to the negative for this breadboard. One uh, special thing about this breadboard is that it's a special one called a stem terra and so basically it has an Arduino already built into it that's why there's no other Arduino board here. This is actually pretty cool since it's way more compact and I don't have to use one of those 3d printed holders to prevent it from getting short-circuited. For most of the, but for most of the basic stuff, the Arduino Uno and the Arduino Mega, it'll be almost the exact same. This is the code that I'm using for this project. The unmodified code that this is based on, I will put in the description of this video. I need a completely different code for this project, because if I want to have separate blinking intervals for separate LEDs, um, I could not use that delay function that the original program that was given to me used. That's because the delay function, it causes like the entire program to pause, and you cannot make it separate, even when you're using the three potentiometers. And when I tried to do it anyways, the variables would add up in a weird way when I was using the old code base, so I just found the example program at this link straight from the Arduino website which was given to me by them. So it uses a different function called millis. The millis function all it does is keeps track of the milliseconds that have passed since the start of the program. At the top of the program I'm just declaring the variables for the pins. So that's setting the variable to the number of which the LED is connected to, so the number pin that the LED is connected to. And the variable previous millis, this will keep the time for when the LED was updated last. In each of the LEDs that is connected to a pin 11, 12, and 13 has one of these variables. Pin mode will just make sure that those pins are set to the output instead of input because that is very important. 
Now that is everything for the setup code right here, just to create all the variables. Also the, as well as the LED state, which will control if it's on or off the LED. Low means off and high would indicate the LED being on. Now for the rest of the code, or for at least for the serial, I could not get that to work. For some reason, it would not print out. This is the code that I had, and nothing would show up within the serial monitor, so I'm not sure what was going on with that. Now in the main loop, that void loop, which goes on for the rest of the program, that you can see that the interval variables, these are being updated to equal the value of the analog read. The analog read will read the value of what pin you set it to. So this will read pin 1, pin 0, and pin 2. And not the other pins like 13, 11, but the analog pins. So like A0, A1, A2. The output wire from the potentiometer, so the orange wire, will connect to these pins. Every time the code loops all the way back up to here, the interval values will update to the time or to the value that was set by this analog read that it got from the potentiometer. Interval variable, that's just the time that it's set to blink at. So the higher it's set, the longer the time in between the blinks. And the original program that I got this from, so the link right here, uh, this was in the setup because their the code, it just wasn't meant for a circuit that had a potentiometer in it. There was no need to keep it inside of the loop, and that I don't think that would waste any program resources. It's not a big program, but it's just something you, you should pay attention to. Next is the mains part, the if statement right here. If statement will check to see if it's time to blink the LED yet. So here it is, current millis minus previous millis is greater than or equal to interval 13. If that is true, it will execute all of this code. Checks to see this by current time, and the current time is given by this, current millis. Current millis is equal to the function milliseconds in milliseconds. That's simply just the time since the program has started. So it keeps track since the actual program has started while it is running forever. And that is just constantly updating this variable throughout as long as the code is running. And now previous millis, that is of course stated up here. And if that is greater than or equal to, to the number set by the potentiometer, this code will execute and update that previous millis value so that if it comes back to this again, it'll know what that value is. All this means is that if the LED was already off, make it on. And if it's not on, or if it's on, make it off. The digital write, this will just update that and write it to the whatever pin this is sends the LED state that you got from this variable to that associated pin, so this would be LED pin 13. And of course, this all repeats the if statement. There's another if statement for every single pin that you want this to be. So since this is an RGB LED, that means that there is three colors, so I have three variables and three if statements. Now back onto the wiring. So what we have three potentiometers, one RGB LED, and then another single color LED to represent each of the colors within this. I use the individual LEDs because it was easier to troubleshoot and test it, the speeds of these, while I was trying to get it all to work, especially trying to get the code to work. This, these brown wires right here, coming down 
are going to the ground pin right here within the board. The red wire coming through here is supplying power to this entire red volt or this entire 3.3 volt rail which supplies power with these white wires to the potentiometers. Also, the green wires, they come from pins 13 through 11, and of course are receiving the on or off from the code from that if statement and sending that to the LEDs. Each of the potentiometers have a white going to the positive, a brown going to the negative, and of course that white is connected to the red, which connects to the 3.3 volts. Each of the potentiometers is also connected by the orange wire to pins A through 0 to pins A2. They read the value given by this potentiometer. So you can see changing the value by turning the knobs. I will put it into show. You can see that if I turn these knobs all the way, they will begin to blink faster. For example, if I turn the red knob all the way down, now only the red will blink slower. You can see that the red LED is blinking slower than the others. If I turn it back up, it will now blink the same as the others. Now here's the schematic that I've made. I've used this website called Tinkercad. It's normally used for making simple 3D models, but for this, in my situation, it could also be used to make drawings or schematics of your circuit. This schematic is kind of different than what I have it as in my actual circuit because in the Tinkercad, for example, these LEDs, they can only be spaced two apart, but in my actual circuit, this wire was stretched over to here. But I can't do that in Tinkercad, so I had to run an extension wire all the way around to there for the simulation to work. But other than that, also well, one other thing is that the I need an additional resistor for the green, since in my circuit I did not need a resistor for the green but the code is exactly the same. The exact same pins, exact same everything. If I start the simulation, it should start up. So now I have my simulation working. It has the exact same code as what I have uploaded to my board. Now you can see here that, lower that down, lower that down, lower that down. Actually, that turns it up. So now both of these, or actually all three of these, are blinking extremely fast. Lower it all the way down, lower it all the way down, lower it all the way down. Now you can see them blinking individually. Say you want the red to blink faster, turn that up. Now you can see that the red is blinking faster, but the green and the blue are the same. And this is, of course, reflected in the RGB LED. And of course, there is also the actual electrical schematic that is given. You can see here that the pinouts from the Arduino come out. So the data 11, data 12, data 13. These are all go through the resistors first, and then two. For example, this resistor then leads to the red LED. And of course, these would connect to the R, the red, green, and blue. So green, I come down to here, green, blue, and the red for the RGB LED. It's being supplied by that 3.3 volt power. And over here you can see the potentiometers with their three outputs, or their input, output, and then the actual analog read coming back from them into these analog read pins. And everything is 
done automatically by Tinkercad when you make it here and it comes out to here. That should be everything. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or ask me in person. Thank you.